bless the name of the Lord. Um, God bless everybody out there. We just want to thank God for for tonight one more time for God's grace over our life. Uh, God has been good to us. Um, one more um, taking us through uh, everything that we've been through. It is by His grace. It is by God's mercy. Um, it is by His doings that we live. Had it not been the grace of God, the enemy would have this time destroyed all of us. Um, every day, every week, every year, the enemy has a plot to destroy what God has for you. And God also has a plan to accomplish mm -hmm. his purpose over your life. And I pray that whatever that God has for us will come to pass in our life. Whatever that God has designed for us will come to pass in our life. Um, this, this day, I just want to share with you how we need to come together this year. If we really want to see the power of God, if we really want to see the blessings of God, we as a people of God need to come together. But we cannot come together unless we respect our differences. <laughs> we cannot come together unless we respect our differences. We can only come together when we respect our differences because we, we are created differently. We, we as a people are created differently. Some are white, some are black, some are brown, some are Chinese. We have di di God created us differently. And as a people, um, we, 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 we speak differently. We act differently. In all of these, each, each one of us has been empowered by God or each one of us has been blessed by God to be a blessing to one another. Each one of us has been blessed by God to be a blessing to one another. <laughs> it, 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 does, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. You've been destined by God to be a blessing to somebody. All of us, all of us, whether you are an African whether you are African American, whether you are white, whether you are European, whether you are Chinese, whether you are Spanish, all of us has been destined by God to be a blessing to each other. All of us. It doesn't matter where you're from. Bless you, everybody. Bless you, everybody. It doesn't matter where you're from. You've been destined by God to be a blessing to somebody. And until we respect our differences until we respect our differences we cannot come together when we refuse to come together we are denying ourselves of God's blessings in our life because I want you to understand church the most greatest gift God has given unto man is man your brother is your gift and your sister is your gift as long as the person is a human being. As long as the person uh, has the spirit of God, that person can be a blessing to you. But if you don't respect that different, <laughs> if you don't respect that different, you will ignore that person thinking that you are the, the best of all. And therefore, that person doesn't really matter. And when you neglect the gift that God has given to you, uh, you are rejecting your own blessing because to one has been given another gift and to another has been given a separate gift. But as we come together, we see the uniqueness of God. God is so powerful. God is so great that when he made us, he, he distributed himself. He divided himself among, our, among us. When God made us as a human being, he divided himself among us. That means some of us are God's ears. That means some of us are God's hands. That means some of us are God's legs. Some of us are God's stomach. Some of us are God's head. When we bring all the body together, <laughs> then we see the fullness of God. But once we are separated, 
We don't see the uniqueness and the fullness of God among us. God is so unique. And there is so much uniqueness among us. But when we bring ourselves together, the reason why many a times we lack is because the person that God has designed to be a blessing to you has been, has been denied and rejected by you. Because the person doesn't look like us. <laughs> because the person doesn't talk like us. Because the person doesn't worship like us. Because the person doesn't pray like us. Because the person doesn't do stuff the way we do. And as a result, that we don't want to have any dealings with that person. And when we get to that point of rejecting our provision because your brother is your provision. Your sister is your provision. He or she is the person that God has created by your side to take you to the next dimension of your life. To unlock you to the next dimension of your life. To open the next door of your life. But many a times, because of our differences among ourselves, we reject the gift of God. Let me tell you a story in the Bible according to the book of, 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 of John chapter 4. The Bible says Jesus must go through Samaria. The Bible says that he got to a place, a, 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 a piece of land that Jacob gave to his children. And the Bible says that he sat by a well side. And there came a woman. A Samaritan woman. The Bible says his disciples has gone to town to get him something to eat. And the Bible says, Jesus, be weary of his journey. My goodness. Jesus, be weary of his journey. Needed help at that time. Jesus, be weary of his journey. Needed help at that time. Regardless of who you are, no matter who you are, you will be weary of the journey that has been set before you. <laughs> no matter who you are, you can be a prophet, you can be an apostle, you can be a teacher, you can be a white, you can be black, you can be Spanish, you can no matter who you are, at a point in time of your journey, you're going to be worried. And you might need help to continue the journey that is set before you. It doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you fast, how holy you are, how righteous you are. Along the line to, to fulfill God-given purpose in life, you're going to get wearied. And when you get wearied, you need a somebody, you might need somebody to take you or carry you to the place that God wants you to be. And the person that God might send on your way will not be like you. <laughs> will not pray like you. Might not, might, might not worship like you. Might not look like you. There is a gift that God has sent on your way to deliver you, to empower you, to help you to the next dimension of your life. So that Jesus, <laughs> weary of his journey, sitting down, there comes a Samaritan woman to draw well, to draw water from the well. And Jesus said, woman, can you please do me a favor? I, I, I need water from you. And the woman looked at him and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Why are you asking water from me? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Samaritan. You are Jewish. We have no dealings. You worship differently. <laughs> you worship in Jerusalem. We worship on the mountain top. There is a separation that is different. <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't talk. We, 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 don't, we don't communicate. Why, why, do you want, why, why do you need water from me? And Jesus said, if you know the gift of God and who is talking to you, you would have asked him of a living water. <laughs> you would have, if you know the gift of God, if you know the gift of God, if you know <laughs> what Jesus is saying, I'm a gift to you and you are a gift to me. I need help from you. Regardless of our, 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 our differences. You are a Samaritan, I'm a Jew. 
But all of us have been destined by God to be a blessing to one another. If I reject and neglect you because of our differences, I might die right here. If you also reject and neglect me because of our, dif of our differences, you're going you're gonna to miss the move of God. Let, let, let's bury our differences. Let's, let's bury our differences. It is, it is, it's, it's not of Jerusalem. It is not of, uh, uh, it's not about Jerusalem. It's not about the mountains. Let's bury our differences. And let's be a blessing unto ourselves. You are unique in your own way. I am unique in my own way. I have been destined by God to be a blessing to you. You have been destined by God to be a blessing to me. If we continue to live our, in our differences, we will die before time. But if we embrace our differences, knowing that our differences are unique, <laughs> we are unique in our own differences, and respect our differences, and come together, then we will see the glory of God. My goodness. Then we will see the glory of God. Church, we will, all, we will not all talk the same, speak the same, pray the same, worship the same. But let us respect each other's worship. Let us respect each other's prayer. Let us respect each other, the way God has made each other. And let us come together. We can keep the Bible says how good and pleasant it is that brethren dwell together. <laughs> how good and pleasant it is for brethren. It is time that the body of Christ comes together. It is time that believers comes together. It is time that we bury our differences because our differences has been designed by the enemy to cut us off. Let us respect one another to the Father. I am cut different. You cut different. The way you preach might be different from the way I preach. But the fact that I don't preach the way you preach doesn't mean I am wrong. And the fact that you, 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 you don't preach the way I preach doesn't mean you are wrong. The fact that you don't prophesy the way I do. And the fact that I don't prophesy the way you do doesn't mean you are wrong. I'm wrong. We are different, church. We are different. And let us respect our differences and come together. Respect our differences. One of the things that God is going to do at this end time is to bring the church together. But we can only come together when we respect our differences. We can only come together when I respect you the way God has made you. And you respect me the way God has made me. All of us are not going to hear from God the same way. So don't condemn somebody how the person hear from God. To, one, to, to somebody, let me help you to understand. Somebody is through dreams. God speaks to them through dreams. Somebody is through revelation. Somebody is through, through visions. Some people also hear from God audible. God speaks to them faith. The fact that God is not speaking to you in dreams doesn't mean somebody that has revelation is wrong. When, 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 when David was about to face Goliath and saw offer him his armor, he said, son, if you're going to fight this guy, you need my armor. Why? Because I have been able to overcome a lot of war. I, I, I am a successful general. I'm a successful king through a lot of wars with my armor. And I want to help you, son. Use my armor. If you're going to use my armor, you're going to be you're going to kill this guy. David put the armor on <laughs> and tried to move. <laughs> but David said, I, I, I can't prove this. I am different. I respect your armor. I'm not saying your armor is wrong. It's great. God has used this armor and, 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 and I brought you a lot of victory. I know you have won a lot of battle, battles through this armor. You've won a lot of wars through this armor. But your armor is different from my armor. <laughs> the way God made and designed you is different from the way God made and designed me. 
I'm not going to condemn your armor. It's great. But let me use my own armor. The fact that somebody's not using your armor and your strategy doesn't mean the person is wrong. The fact that somebody's not using your armor and your strategy doesn't mean the person is wrong. The fact that somebody doesn't lift their hands and pray like the way you does doesn't mean the person is wrong. The fact that somebody doesn't sit down and worship the way you does doesn't mean the person is wrong. The fact that somebody doesn't cover their head doesn't mean the person is wrong. The question is, does the person see his breakthrough when he cover his head? It's all about resource. It's all, let me help you, there are people that get resource when they worship. And don't make a doctrine out of that telling everybody, hey, if you want to see the blessing of God, you got to worship. Don't do that. That is the way God has designed. That is the way God communicates with you. That is the way you communicate with God. When you worship, you feel his presence. You, see, you feel his power. There are people who are like you. You preach to a lot of people who are like you. And you encourage people who are like you to continue to worship. Because as soon as they worship, they are going to see his presence. There are some people they got to fast. Once they fast, they see the move of God. There are some people that got to read the Bible. There are some people going to live a righteous. People are cut different. And as we come together and respect, we cannot we cannot come together until we respect our differences. Until we recognize that that person is also of God, regardless. That person, let me tell you, and the apostle is different from the prophet. And the prophet is different from the teacher. Excuse me, and the teacher is different from the pastor. And the pastor is different from the evangelist. But all of us has been called by God into the kingdom. To be a blessing to each other. No one is greater than the other. No one is greater than the other. No one is greater than the other. No one is powerful than the other. All of us has been called by God into the kingdom to be a blessing to one another. If you leave as a prophet without a teacher, you are denying yourself of God's blessing in your life. Because you, as a prophet, need the teacher. I don't, I don't care how much you see. You need a teacher. There are some things that God will hide it from you, but he will give it to the teacher. There are some things that God will hide it from the teacher and give it to the prophet. There are some things that God will hide it from the prophet and give it to the evangelist. There are some stuff that God will hide it from the, uh, uh, the evangelist and give it to the apostle. So the Bible says, until we come together to the unity of the faith, Unto the stature of the fullness of Christ, we will be like children. My God. <laughs> that means when, when we push one, one another away, when we push ourselves away, we are denying of ourselves for maturing in the sight of God. The person that God has desired to be a blessing to your life might not be like you. Might not talk like you. I like you. Jesus said, if you know the gift, he said, woman, woman, listen to me. <laughs> if you know the gift, I'm weary of my journey. I need your help. G G I'm, talk I'm not talking about, we're talking about Jesus. Said, woman, <laughs> the Bible said, Jesus, be weary of his journey. Weary of his journey. He needed a help of somebody to go to the next dimension. He got to continue the journey, but he's weary. He need food. He need water. There comes a Samaritan woman. That the Jews have no dealings with them because of the way they worship. Because of the way both of them worship. One of our separation is the way we worship. The way we do things. 
has pushed one another away. Because we don't want to respect the fact that the way that person does things is different. It's of God and it's different. The Bible said we see in path and we prophesy in path. Nobody has it all. Nobody knows it all. If you think you know it all and you have it all, you're making a mistake. If you think what you got is the truth and only the truth, you're making a mistake. <laughs> if <laughs> you, you're making a big mistake. You're making a huge mistake. If you think what you got is the only truth and everybody is wrong and every culture is wrong, every nationality is wrong, every place is wrong, except the small that you got, you're making a big mistake. And when we make such a mistake, we deny ourselves from somebody coming in to be a blessing to us because we think everybody is wrong. The woman said, asked Jesus, where, where do we think we should worship? And Jesus said, a time is coming. And now is the time. True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks sight to worship him. And, and I, I, I want to say this and we're going to close. Church, it is about time this year. Respect the difference that God has made us. Respect somebody regardless of the differences. I know, I know, I know a lot of people that say that is a white man's song. I don't want to listen to that white man's song. That is a black people's song. I don't want to listen to those songs. That is a Spanish song. That is a Chinese song. That is whatever song. Is the power behind? Is the meaning behind that makes sense? And God has given your blessing to somebody that doesn't talk like you. We, we're talking about, about the good Samaritan. The guy that the Samaritan helped was a Jewish. The guy that the Samaritan helped was a Jewish. <laughs> the guy that the Samaritan helped was a Jewish. His own Jewish people, religion, rejected him when he was down there. You don't know whom God was sent to be a blessing to you. Therefore, you got to be nice to everybody that comes around you. I say it again. You have no idea whom God has designed to be a blessing and a help to you. That person might not speak and look like you. But if you reject and neglect that person because the person doesn't speak or talk like you or act like you, you are denying yourself of God's blessings in your life. A Samaritan. A Samaritan. He might not be a Christian. A, a somebody who prays in tongues. A Samaritan. A Samaritan. Became a blessing to the, 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 the Jewish guy that, that was on his way. From Jerusalem to Jericho. That was making a journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. When the priest saw him, they, they, he bypassed him. When the Levites saw him, he bypassed him. His own Jewish people, religious people, did not help him. Church, you have no idea whom God has designed to be a blessing to you. You have no, nobody has any idea. All of us have been designed by God to be a blessing. Don't look down on anybody this year. Don't look down on anybody regardless of where the person is from. This year, don't look down. And as much as you can, dwell in peace with all men this year. As much as you can. As much as you can, live in peace with all men. Anytime we are divided, we are running away from our blessing. Anytime we are divided, we are running away from our blessing. Because that sister right there, 
is a solution to your life. That brother right there is a solution to your life. I have seen and I've come in contact with people that I never thought they're going to be a blessing, but they became a blessing to me. They don't look like me. They don't talk like me. They don't walk like me. They don't pray like me. But became a blessing to me because we were living in peace. Nobody will help you until you live in peace with that person. And sometimes we don't want to look at their face. We don't want to embrace them. And blessing is coming and we're pushing the blessing away because they don't look like a, it doesn't look like a blessing. And I want you to understand when God designed a blessing, it doesn't look like a blessing. Anytime God designed a blessing, he put something around it that doesn't look like a blessing. Anytime the enemy is also bringing a destruction, a curse to you, he designed it so good and put something around it that doesn't look as bad as you think it is. But later on, you realize that, oh my God, what did I do? I made a big mistake. Joseph was a blessing to people in jail who were not like him. I pray over your life that this year, all of us, <laughs> we will try as much as we can to live in peace with everybody. Because the most greatest gift God has given unto man is man. It is not somebody who does no, it's not about somebody who look like you. But somebody that look like God. It's not like it's not somebody who look like you and pray like you. But somebody that look like God. And you got to understand whether he's a Chinese, whether he's black, whether he's white, whether he's Spanish, it doesn't matter his gender. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. We are not going to be talking the same way, the same lingo. But let us respect one another's differences. And let me say this, I'm going to close. When I was in Singapore, when I went to Bible College in Singapore, my, 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 my dean who lived in, in Israel for so many years told me this story that happened in, 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 in Jerusalem, in, 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 in Israel. He said there was this big argument and these two kids were arguing on a subject and there comes a rabbi and the boys called the rabbi and said, Rabbi, can you please come help us settle this argument, this dispute? So the rabbi went and he asked the first guy to bring his point across. The first guy, very eloquent, knew how to talk, started talking. Talking and talking for about three minutes, the rabbi looked at him and said, you are right. And the rabbi said to the other guy, let me hear you. So the guy is not as eloquent as the first one, but brought his, his point across. And the rabbi said to him, after three minutes, the rabbi said to him, you are also right. And the guys around said, rabbi, how can both of them be right? One has to be wrong and one has to be right. And the rabbi turned to the people around and said, you guys are also right. All of us can be right. <laughs> Look at the account of the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and James. All the accounts were different concerning Jesus. Some kind of event, you will realize that Matthew's account was different from, J, from, from, from John, excuse me. But God allowed all of them to be in the Bible. What God is saying to us. 
what you saw, what I saw. It is different though, but all of us are right. <laughs> what you saw, what I saw, is different, but all of us are right. What you saw, what I saw, what John saw, what Matthew saw, what, 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 what Mark saw, they saw differently, but all of them were right. Let the peace of God, let the power of God dwell with you. And let us understand one another and live in peace. God bless you. Again, I'm Pastor Kwame. Shalom. Have a wonderful year. This is a year of plenty and fruitfulness. May the peace of God that surpass every understanding dwell with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Shalom and peace.